Hey everybody, today Rado runs through City Council, which is a brand new city building game with a fairly unique perspective compared to all the other ones. There's been quite a spate of these that have come out in the last few years. And this is the latest one. And in this one, players are members of the city council. We're not like high level real estate moguls like Donald Trump's just you know building whatever we want. We work on a council together to try to do what's best for the city while also meeting the needs of special interest group that, that approach us. It's actually a really, really interesting take and I'm gonna run through it today because I think it's on Kickstarter right now, or if it's not, it's a, a Kickstarter for it is about to start. And also, I believe this is going to be a game that's available for pickup at Essen 2013. So, I've uh, fast-tracked this one to try to get a video out so folks can make a decision about whether it's going to be a game for them. So, let us go. Alrighty. Here we go, here's the board, and I should say this is all prototype, early, pre-release stuff. You know, this is just on, you know, cheap poster board, the board, and, and the cards are actually actually fairly nice, but they are still a very, very cheap thing. And you know, there's everything's just low quality, but I think this is representative of final art, I believe. So, uh, you know, it, the quality's not there, but otherwise you should be able to judge this based on the art, if such things matter to you. And we are all fickle creatures, aren't we not? We should all put art aside and just focus on the gameplay, but let's be honest, art matters. As it should. Anyway, though. So, it's a fairly attractive looking game, and uh, why am I even blathering? Let's just play. Okay. I am the first player. This is going to be a two player game with me and Jen. And in a two player game, there is a third dummy player. Uh, Councilman. Nope. No, 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 yeah, I'm not. That's not Leslie, because this guy's an incompetent boob, whereas Leslie's actually a pretty cool cat. Uh, maybe it's Councilman Jam, let's say. But anyway, sorry for all the Parks and Rec fans out there. But anyway, uh, so there are three councilmen, Jen, me, and the dummy player. In this game, I will be the first player, which means, that means I start out the game on the election committee. I am, I am the chairman of the election committee, that's what it means to be first player, and as first player, I have the power to decide what seats the other players go into, Jen and the dummy player. So they can be on the transport committee, the treasury committee, the union committee, or the executive committee. See, I think I'm going to put uh, Councilman Jam here on the union committee because, well, actually, the thing is, any of these that I put Jen on is going to give her a nice advantage. So I have to choose. I mean, if I, if I put her on the executive committee, she'll get another delegate vote. If I put her on the treasury committee, she gets extra money. I think I'll put her on the transport committee. Uh, the union committee gets to draw extra cards, so I gave that to the dummy player. I'll put Jen on the transport committee. And now we are ready to start playing. There's a turn sequence right here. The first thing that happens every round I guess you can think, think of this as quarters. Every, you know, we, we have quarterly meetings that the city council gets together and makes decisions about how the city is going to advance. So the first thing that happens every quarter is we have our committee space. And what that means is, well, the, you just saw, the main thing is whoever is on the election committee shuffles people around. Every time there always has to be a little bit of change. The voters demand change. So you'll see that on the next round. And also, some people get a benefit. The transport committee doesn't really get an immediate benefit. The treasury committee, if somebody was there, they would actually take, like, skim a little off the top. That you know, at, at the beginning of the game, our city budget is seven. If somebody was on the treasury committee, they would take a, a dollar marker and the city budget would go down to six. The rules say that it's embezzling, but I tend to think of it as you're just earmarking it for future special projects because that money will go back into the development of projects. So whoever's on the treasury can earmark certain amounts of funds, but nobody did that. The election committee, I've already done it. I've set up here around. The union committee, so now this happens, everybody gets to draw two cards and every you know most people have to give discard one of them so they only get to keep one of them but whoever's on the union committee gets to keep both so that means councilman jam here gets two cards and everybody else draws two and keeps one so i draw two jen draws two and we're each going to keep one now I didn't actually talk about this. At the beginning of the game, everybody got two cards. These are called favor cards. These are special interest groups that approach us in secret. You know, this is hands down. Nobody knows what special interests lobbyists are whispering in our ears. So Jen, she's got the finance and commerce chairman 
coming to her all the time. And the industry and transport chairman, you know, looking for some favors. Me, I've got an eco organization activist, um, you know, on behalf of animal welfare asking me, sell any restaurants, sell any zoos, because if we ever get any in the town, if I sell them, you know, get, get them out of the town, then the animal welfare will put their weight behind me and I'll score a victory point. By the same token, what is this? This is social and welfare lobbyists has come to me, want some more blue collar employment. So these are basically targets I have for myself. These are objectives that I can give myself. Nobody knows what they are. And if I can achieve them, I can get you know one, sometimes two, three, even four victory points, depending on how it goes. And now, as part of the committee phase, everybody draws two and keeps one. So, although remember, since uh, Jam over here was on the union committee, he keeps both of them. So. You know, he gets more variety, more options. Although he's a dummy player, she doesn't really care. So, do I want to also listen to the industry and transport chairman or the public safety chief of staff to increase our goods reserve or demand justice? So this guy wants me to finish a, a quarter with more goods than money. You know, it's, I mean, right now at the beginning of the game, the city starts with one good and seven budget. So it's quite a way on the other side. I'd have to end a quarter with less budget than goods. And that would make this guy happy. And I, even more if I could double it. This guy, this um, you know, chief of police guy, he wants a courthouse built. He wants a prison built. If both of them were, you know, so two points for either of them, if I get both of them built, he'll give me um, a you know, bonus point. So I get potentially five points off this. But that's going to be tough. And I know it's tough because these are all color coded. The brightest one, like uh, no blue collar workers unemployed, the, the brightest ones are the easiest. A little bit dim is kind of hard, and the gray ones are very hard. So, uh, you know, the, this guy is going to take me a while to do it, whereas this guy isn't quite so hard. I think I'll dump the cop, and it goes over here into a face down. Nobody knows what you discarded because that might give them an indication of what you care about if you see what you discarded. So I'm discarding that guy. So these are the special interest lobbyists that are coming to me. Let's see what Jen got. And of course, I don't know what she's got, but I got to choose. Oh, white collar employment. Um, make sure the white collar people have plenty of work and an urban renewal, relocate a building. Now, let's see, it, it, she already has an urban infrastructure of activate industrial zones. Um, so these two might work well together because they're both, um, you know, kind of focusing on industry. This wants relocating and upgrading buildings. This guy wants activating and filling zones. Let's see, or does Jen want the white collar? Now, this is actually a really easy one to do. I think I'm, a gent's gonna, even though she has some synergy there, she's gonna go for this because at the beginning of the game, get, making sure that there are no unemployed white collar workers is easy because at the beginning of the game, our city has three blue collar people who need work and one white collar. So it's not gonna be hard for Jen to do that. All right, so anyway, that was part of the committee phase. Um, that we're still in at the beginning of the quarter. And then finally, the executive. If anybody were the chairman of the executive committee, they would get one extra delegate vote, but nobody gets that. Alrighty, we have finished the first phase, the committee phase, and we're out of committee. Now, we go to a council meeting where we actually engage in negotiations to try to determine the future expansion of the city. And we have votes and all this stuff. So. And we have our secret interests that we're trying to pursue. So what's going to happen is, in turn order, starting with Jen, then me, and then finally Councilman Jam here, each of us will make a proposal to the council. We will propose either to build one of the buildings that the engineering department has come up with, to sell an existing building to private enterprise and make some more money, increase the city budget, or to move a building so that we can basically rezone stuff and move stuff around to make room for new buildings we want to build. So. And Jen is first, so she is the first one who has to make a proposal. And now, considering that Jen wants no white collar workers unemployed, she maybe maybe she wants to build this high tech firm because this high tech firm can put blue collar work, or I'm sorry, white collar workers to work. So this would help her support this goal. But you see, she also has this one. She wants to um, have a high budget. 
She wants lots of money. Leave five bucks in the budget at the end of the turn. Five bucks at the end of council if that's possible. So she doesn't want to spend a lot of money. So she probably doesn't want to spend on any of these expensive ones because these cost two bucks to build as opposed to one. So she probably will stay away from those. And then her other goal is, well, she wants to get some industry built. She wants to activate an industry zone. There's two of them. Um, fill up an industry zone will be worth points. And then if she could activate both, it'd be worth even more. That, all three of those, you can see they're darker gray. So those are going to, she's going to have to put those on hold for a while. I think though, she wants to help ensure that her white collar workers are going to be taken care of. So Jen is going to propose to the council and we have no idea why. Of course we know she's doing this because of her special interests, but she's going to make a proposal. And so it's just a purple marker. She proposes to everybody sitting at the table, hey, let's build a high tech firm. Okay. And now it's up to her. She could just say, I propose high tech firm and leave it at that. Or she could actually pitch her case. She could actually pitch this. And Jen and I, we have found when we're doing this, we kind of get into it. We kind of play the role and we actually talk about why it's so important for the town to have high tech because we have to keep our white collars unemployed so that we can, you know, increase the overall prosperity and we need goods because, you know, and high tech is a great way to make goods. Actually, high tech puts our white collar workers to work and it makes money and and goods, which we can then transfer into other things. So it's all good. Building any of these, or most of these anyway, helps the city. But, you know, Jen could make a sales pitch if she wants to. And she'd have to work really hard to pitch the pawn shop because the pawn shop gobbles up our goods, cr produces crime and money. So the pawn shop, because sometimes the mob will come to you and that'll be the special interest group that's talking to you and they want, okay, we need crime to raise or we need certain illicit things to happen. And then you might want a pawn shop to get built and you'd have to pitch really hard to convince people to vote for the pawn shop. But anyway, so Jen has proposed high tech. Now it's my turn. We're going from left to right. So I have to propose something. And of course I cannot mirror her proposal. I have to propose something else. So I want blue collar. I want all our blue collar hard at work. So I probably want to get a building that puts the blue collar laborers at work, to work. I also want to sell a restaurant. So to sell a restaurant, the restaurant would have to get built. The restaurant has not come out yet. So I got to keep an eye out. When the restaurant ever comes out, I definitely want to propose that we, um, what do you call it? That we, we propose that we build it because then later on I want to propose that we sell it so that I can get the animal welfare people happy with me. And then also I want to generate a lot of goods so that we can have more goods than money. So these two things are my short term. Is there anything that puts blue collar workers to work and generates goods? Let's see what we got here. The diner um, basically puts blue collars and just generates money. Uh, the bank, blue collar people plus money generates more money. The police station, blue collar plus money, um, generates community, which is an important resource. It you know, improves the overall happiness and health of the city and reduces crime. Let's see. And uh, let's see, this uh, distribution depot. Ah, the distrib distribution depot basically takes a blue collar worker and lets you convert a good to money or a money to good. This is a very good one for me is it would let me control and ensure I've got more goods than money, or I should say we do. And then finally, this broker, white collar plus goods equals more goods. So this is a really nice one, but it's also cost two bucks. And then the clinic, I've got that white collar do donating time at the clinic, you know, doctors and whatnot working at the clinic can improve the community. I think I am definitely going to propose the distribution depot because that's perfect for me. It, it helps a pro pursue two of my agendas. And now again, I could sell, you know, because you know, if I want to, hey, this is really, really great. It you know, gives us a lot of control. If we need more money, if we need more goods, it's a lot of flexibility. It puts our blue collar workers to work, but somebody else might know. And also, uh, by the way, this is a prototype. I, I mentioned it's prototype, right? Um, it was kind of incomplete. I had to scribble on some of these things to indicate that these are upgradable so we could upgrade in the future. But somebody else might argue, yeah, let's not build the distribution depot because every time we use it, it creates pollution. So that might be an argument against my uh, building. Oh, also here's another nice typo. I believe that you'll see if several typos in here, but I'm pretty sure they're all being fixed for the final, because again, this is a prototype. Anyway, that's my proposal, the distribution depot, you guys saw why. And now finally, Councilman Jam is going to propose something. And what we do with him is, we just randomly pick one of his cards. He's a wild card, we never know what the heck he's gonna do. Let's see, I'll, this one I dropped on the floor will be the one we pick. And he says, oh, okay. Recreational demand. If possible, he would like to build a museum or a zoo or a shopping mall. 
Those are the three things he wants to build. None of those, our engineering department has not come up with that. In fact, I think all those are fairly high level things that won't come up until later. So we can't build any of those. So Councilman Jan cannot help the social and welfare lobbyists. So instead, Councilman Jam, if he cannot exceed to the, the, the if he cannot deliver a building that, you know, whatever random card we draw, instead he will always, and most likely, most of the time, he ends up going, he always wants to build the biggest, best thing he can, because he's all about expansion and growth. So that means he always goes all the way furthest to the left and all the way up, so that means he proposes the brokerage. And see, in a two-player game, this is something we know. You know, probably seven times out of ten, Councilman Jam is always going to take the biggest thing. So we can anticipate that, and we can shift our votes to try to take that into account. So it's actually an interesting wrinkle in the two-player game that even though he's unpredictable, that's not true. He is predictable, and we can use that to our plans. You know, I mean, if if um, you know if. If you're, if you're picking what, what do you call it, um, what, what favor cards you want, knowing that Councilman Jam is probably going to go for the brokerage, and it means you could throw your weight behind it too, mean, maybe would, have cho would help you decide which favor card you took. But anyway, so we have now all made a proposal. There's three players, so three proposals are sitting before the city council. And now we vote. Each of us has one vote. Be, and somebody would have had an extra vote if they were on the executive committee, but as it stands right now, everybody has one vote and we vote in order and we cannot vote for our own proposal. So Jen votes first. She cannot vote for her high tech firm. She either votes for my distribution depot or the brokerage. And, you know, and this is me, this is my last chance because I think she's, well, actually, it's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Well, so Jen doesn't want to build either of these because remember she's got the secret goal of ensuring there's a lot of money left over in the budget, but you know both of these cost two bucks. But the interesting thing is both of them are good at generating cash, but this one guarantees generates cash for one good. You can and a white collar worker you can create two goods and money. This one takes a blue collar worker and um, lets you convert goods to money, and it makes pollution. This one puts white collar workers to work. And remember, Jen wants to see her white collar workers put to work. So I think Jen is gonna back Councilman Jam's proposal. And I'm like, no, the distribution center, we need it bad. Of course, anyway, if I, and I failed obviously to convince Jen of my cause. And now of course in this game, it's all about negotiation. So if I want to, I could say, you know, hey, I could throw a vote your way. Um, if you vote for my thing, and then that might change Jen's mind. So, you know, because I promised her I'll vote for your high tech firm if you vote for my distribution depot. So, a big part of this game is negotiation. But you know what? Let's see. I don't think I need to worry about that. Yeah, I'm not going to bother negotiating. Honey, that's fine. You go on ahead and you vote for the brokerage. Okay. So, Jen has done her vote, and we continue from left to right. So, now I make my vote. I cannot vote for my own. I could vote for the brokerage firm, and, you know, support jam or I could vote for the high tech. I'm actually surprisingly going to vote for Jen's high tech. I've got a plan here. Being on the election committee is going to give me a special power pretty soon here. My special power on the election committee, I have two powers. One is I decide where everybody works and number two is I break ties and we're about to have a tie. Okay. So anyway, Jen voted for the broker. I voted for the brokerage. I voted for the high tech firm and now councilman jam, his voting pretty much follows the same path as his proposals. Now he can't vote for his own, but he'll always try to vote for something that was on his special interest card, and since something's out there, he will always vote for the biggest, bestest thing. So again, it was preordained that he was gonna vote for my distribution depot. All right, so we have a completely hung decision, total three-way tie, and that means as the head of the election committee, I get to break the tie, and I get to choose which of these get built. And so you better believe my distribution depot is gonna get built. It's good to be on the election committee to break those ties. All right, so I get my vote back, I get my proposal back, and this is gonna be one of the two things we build. And since these are still tied, I have to choose one of them. And again, Jen could start lobbying me, um, although actually Jen would be happy with either of these builds. And quite frankly, because remember, she just wants um, white collars, and both of these employ white collar. And since I want to spend money, I want to spend money as fast as I can so that we've got more goods, I think I will opt, I will back Councilman Jam's proposal of the broker. 
So there's jams or, you know, everybody gets their votes back. So the brokerage, oops, that's for next turn. Oopsie do. Uh, I picked up one by accident. Ah, peaking. Shouldn't be peaking. Alrighty. And so, unfortunately, no, the high tech firm didn't get built. So gen stuff comes back. And two of the three buildings. And I think with uh, two and three player games, only two things get built every turn. With four and five player games, three things get built every turn. But that's a big part of the game, is all the wheeling and dealing and negotiating and trying to get the things built that you want built to fulfill your special interests. Okay, so these are going to get built. Another benefit of being on the election committee, not only do you get to pick where everybody goes, not only do you get to break ties, but you also get to build... To, to, okay, it's so actually, I'm sorry, I should say, the council meeting is over. We are done. The council, oh, no, no, actually there's one last thing we do before the council meeting closes, and that is we choose, we zone and choose where these things are gonna get built. And since I'm on the election committee, I'm arguably the most powerful person, I'm the first player, I get to choose how and where and what order these things get built in. Order could be important. If we're really low on funds, um, we don't have enough to build both, I would probably choose to build the one I want and then let the other one not get built because we're out of money. But as it stands right now, building these two is gonna cost four, so one, two, three, four. Our budget has gone from seven to three. <clears throat> okay, and at the, at the beginning of the game, we have no supply, we have no power reserve, where you know, we don't have any excess power, and we have one good. So anyway, we're going to build both of these, and I have to choose where we build. At the beginning of the game, there is this central district, you know, the city center. This is, kind, this is commercial, the blue is commercial, the green is residential, the yellow is industrial, and you'll see a distribution, distribution depot is yellow, a brokerage is commercial. So normally, in the latter half of the game, we'd be building these things in their specialized zones because it's generally cheaper to build. I could build this brokerage in a residential zone if I want, but it would cost more. It costs less if I build it in the correct zone. But at the beginning of the game, we can't, the city hasn't expanded enough. We can't build out into these zones yet. We cannot do that until we fill up this central area. So as you can see, if I like build like this, in one more turn probably, we'll fill up the central area and then we can start building into the outer areas and also all these new buildings join the game. However, if I wanted to, if I wanted to put that off for a little while, I could instead build, say, something like well, like, oh, actually, oh, this is interesting. If I want to spend more money, I can be wasteful. I could build, say, something like this. And what that means is each of these costs two bucks to build, right? Um, and you can, and basically, if you build in the correct color, it just costs the cost. If you build in the center, this kind of wild card region that has no color, it just costs the cost. But if I want to build this like this, so half of it is in a residential zone, this would cost me two plus one additional one. So it would cost me three bucks to build this way. So instead of costing four bucks to build these two things, it would cost me six bucks to build this kind of inefficient way. And I'd almost completely break the uh, bank for the city. So that would be a very selfish thing of me to be increasing our goods reserve, not by increasing our goods, but by reducing our excess cash. And now, you know, so I'm thinking about that, and, you know, it's my decision because I'm on the election committee. And Jen says, no, don't do that because, you know, don't waste all our money because she wants to ensure we have a nice excess budget. And so I say, oh, well, all right, I guess I won't do that if you vote my way next turn. And, you know, and again, negotiation comes in. Now, I have to be honest. When Jen and I have played the game, we have not played... It's interesting, um, you know, I could be really, really hardcore and really, really cutthroat and try to pursue my agenda at the expense of the town. This is a bad thing for the town to waste this money by putting a brokerage and a distribution depot half in this residential zone. It's silly when in fact, the smart thing is just build like this or at the very least, build like this. So we're building with peak efficiency. So that's what I should do. Um, but if I want to be a jerk, I could expand, and, and, but I'm not going to do that. Jen and I, we find, it's interesting, we want to do what's right for us, but we also want to do what's right for the city. Because there, there can be a problem. If we run the city so poorly that our pollution and our criminal activity go through the roof, which is to say all our pollution to cubes, if we run out of pollution cubes and crime cubes, the, we, everybody loses. Now this is a long shot. It's very unlikely that's going to happen at least in the games we've played so far. But, I mean, I guess there is a reason to try to do what's best for the city. But Jen and me, we just try to do what's best for the city because we want to be good councilmen. And you know, quite frankly, if I want to get into negotiation, 
And I said something like, um, <clears throat> hey, you know what? I won't build this way, Jen, if you vote my way. Her counter response might be, you know what? We don't negotiate with terrorists, but I'll tell you what. If you do that, I will never vote for anything you propose ever. So you have lost my vote. And then that's an interesting counter negotiation. And I would say, oh, well, but you know what? Quite frankly, it's not an issue because I don't think Jen and I would do something that's so reckless and bad for the city. But that would be a reason I wouldn't want to do it because I would, you know, I, I want to stay on Jen's good side. I want her to vote in my favor. So anyway, this is my proposal. I'm proposing the brokerage. Um, actually, let's have the brokerage be like this. Because if we make residentials that can spill in the residential area, I don't want the brokerage to block them. So let's put the brokerage like this. And I'll put the, I could put the distribution center like this. So the center is almost filled up. Um, in fact, actually, maybe I do want to. Maybe I do want to fill the center up because I want to get to the zoo as fast as I can. And the zoo is one of these things. So the sooner the center fills up, the better for me because we can start getting extra buildings. So I propose like that, or I, I don't propose. It's my choice. I do this. And so now, these buildings are built. It costs us four out of our budget, right? One, two, three, four, and they're built. And now the council meeting is over. Everybody is done for the quarter. Everybody can go home. And now we go into the production phase where the city itself gets to work and starts generating goods and resources. But now we are still involved with this um, in player order, again, starting with Jen and then me and then, um, well, actually Councilman Jam, the dummy player stays out of this. It's just me and Jen. We take turns putting the workers, the blue and white collar workers to work in our city to generate goods. And this is where Jen's benefit comes in because Jen, as a member of the transport committee, she's basically able, she controls the roads and stuff like that. So she can manipulate stuff so that um, um, different things will thrive. And what that means is she gets to do activate two buildings and then I get to activate one and then she gets to activate two and I get to activate one. In the later game, that can be very powerful, very important. In the early game, it's not that big a deal. That's why I gave this one to Jen. Anyway though, workforce housing. Um, let's see. Jen's first and she's gonna activate two of these buildings. Now remember, she wants white collar workers employed. So she's gonna make sure this white collar worker gets to work. He can either go to this brokerage, I think she, I think it will. He'll go to the brokerage, which means, as you can see, the brokerage requires one white collar worker and one good. And what's gonna happen is, um, at the after the production is done, two goods and two bucks will be made. And now if I could've, I, if I could have gone first, I would not have wanted this white collar worker to work here because, it, yeah, it's great that it generates two good, but it also generates two bucks. And remember, I want more goods than bucks. So maybe I would have had him go to the high tech firm. Oh, but actually it doesn't really matter. The, high, the brokerage firm is an upgraded version of the high tech firm, basically. Um, anyway though, so, no, actually. Yeah, 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 actually. No, let's well, see, if, if, if this guy had gone to the high tech firm, we would, at the end of this, have our original goods cube, so we'd have two cubes and one dollar um, bonus. This way, we are, oh no, we're still getting two cubes and one dollar, so it's the same either way, so I don't really mind. Jen's chosen that. She also gets to activate one other building, because she's on the transport committee, so what's the other one she's gonna choose? She wants money as much as possible. She wants to generate funds, so, but fortunately at the beginning of the game, that's not gonna be very hard. Oh, interesting. No, 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 okay. So at the beginning, that's not gonna be very hard. Jen is going to put um, one of the blue collar workers over here at the diner. So they're gonna work the diner, which means a blue collar worker is going to generate money. So those are her two, and now it's my turn, and I get to activate one building. However, I think my time is up because all I've got left is two blue collar workers. And as you can see, um, they could come here to work at the shop, but we don't have any more goods. We don't have any white collar workers for high tech, and, um, oh, 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 yes, actually, I will. I'll put this blue collar worker here to work in the distribution depot. Because what I'm gonna have him do is I'm gonna have him convert two bucks into a good. And um, so that's actually pretty nice. And because that works in my favor. Remember, that's why I wanted the distribution depot, almost forgot. Okay, and now, uh, that's my one. Jen could place two more. There's one more worker, but there's no place he can go because we don't have any goods. Nothing has been generated yet. Right now, we're just allocating the workers. In, in the worker placement phase of the game. But anyway, so we have finished the allocation. Now, before anybody produces, we have to do an unemployment check. And what that means is we look over here and say, uh-oh, one blue collar worker is out of work. So we take it over here and see, this would mean if, if, there, if everybody was at work, 
We, um, you know, well, actually, okay, well, since there's one blue collar worker out of work, I put him here. If there had been two, they would, the two would have gone here. If there had been three or more, they would have gone here. Same for white collar workers. More and more white collar workers might be out of work. But anyway, so um, I, I checked the unemployment. This guy was unemployed, so it comes over here. And um, <clears throat> now we basically reap the rewards or the penalties of employment, of employment or unemployment. Since there are no unemployed white workers, white collar workers, we get zero. Another white collar worker will come to our city because this is the land of milk and honey. There's plenty of work for white collar workers. He's very happy. You can see plus one. Since there is only one blue collar worker out of work, this is actually still a blue collar haven. So a blue collar will come to work. So our city has just increased because of our ability to put people to work. Now, if there had been more out-of-work people, excess of two out-of-work blue collars means we would have started getting crime. Three out-of-work blue collars means we'd get two crime. And uh, more white-collar workers, it doesn't create crime, but if white-collar workers start if, in droves, get out of business, they just leave. They leave the city. Blue collars, they don't leave, they turn to crime. Okay, or at least crime increases. So, we have, uh, and now, after we've checked the unemployment, finally we produce. And that means each of these three buildings will produce. The bro and um, it can be in any order, basically, because they're all going to produce. The broker, I take this white guy, and he, now he's going to need more work next quarter. And we get rid of this good that he did, but we have generated two goods, one, two, and two bucks, one, two. Next up, over here at the distribution center, this guy, he's gonna need work again. And I say, you know what? I'm trans our two excess goods, one, two, into, um, into, a, uh, into another good. Oof. Okay, and then finally, this diner gets to work as well. This guy needs work. And it was just basically, it generated money for us. Okay, so all of that is done. And we have finished production. Now let's pause for a second and re remember. Now remember, I wanted, well actually this is at the end of the turn. I wanted to have no blue collar unemployed. Unfortunately, there were blue collar unemployed. Jen wanted no white collar unemployed. And she did succeed at this. As soon as that happened, she could have declared, hey, Z no white collars unemployed. And she could have scored a point. You know what? In fact, let's have her do that. Because, but she didn't want to, she could wait. She could wait until we have a lot of white collar, and if five white collar are all employed, she would have gotten a bonus point. Seven, this is actually gets a bit tougher. She's just gonna take the point while she can. So, um, you know, since at the moment that there was all white collar workers were employed, she scored this, and it went away, and she scored one point. Me, I did not get a chance to do that with my blue collar. Let's see, now, um, Right, so that's all done. We finished production. Now we have to monitor the, the state of the city. And what that means is we compare how good the city, the, the government, you know, the state government, I guess, determines how well we are doing. And what that means is we compare our community, we compare our lifestyle indicators. We um, add up our community and then we subtract pollution and criminal. And then we see where we came up on the lifestyle indicator. Unfortunately, fortunately, actually, fortunately, unfortunately, they're all zeros. We didn't generate any community, but because we don't have any buildings done. Like, remember, the police station generates better community. Um, so does the clinic. We didn't build those things, so we didn't generate any community. Um, however, oh, I forgot. We did. Remember uh, the district? I forgot when I activated this. It did generate one pollution from the distribution network. So we compare... Um, no positive, and these are negative. There's no crime, but there is. So we have an overall negative one. So that means at negative one, we lose a community. Now, we didn't have any community, so it's no big deal. But if the lifestyle goes down further, we um, start losing white-collar workers, and eventually we start losing blue-collar workers as well. And so that's the problem with having more pollution and crime than community. Anyway, that we can start bleeding our good workers. But as it stands right now, everything's fine. So that was the, the government has monitored us and we have not been kicked out. At this point, if all our black cubes and red cubes were um, on the board, we had done so terribly at uh, controlling pollution and crime, the game would immediately be lost. Like I said, that's a long shot. I don't think that can really happen. At least, I don't know, it'd be really, really tough for that to happen. But anyway, this is where, so we've, we've checked our lifestyle indicators and now finally at the end of the turn, we replenish. So several things happen. All of these buildings that did not get built, they are gone. They go into the discard pile. 
They can, they'll come back later. They definitely will. Things shuffle back around. These two, though, they stick around. And they become new things we can build next turn, or next quarter. Two, three. Okay. And hey, there's the restaurant I wanted. Remember, I want to get a restaurant built. Okay. So these things uh, come up. We, um, you know, we've cleaned everything up. Oh, and everybody uh, moves from just being on the committee to being in the A spot. Now what that means is no one player can be in a given committee for more than two turns in a row. So there's this built-in timer. At the end of the next turn, we'll go here, which means on the following turn, people will have to shuffle around whether they like it or not. So people can only stay on a given committee for a certain amount of time. Alrighty. So that was it, and now we go on to the second quarter. Once again, we go back to committee. And me, I'm in the election committee, and I have control of being able to swap people around. But the rules are kind of interesting. The voters demand change, but they don't want very much change. So I have to make at least one change, but I also have to make the fewest changes possible. Um, so like as an example, I myself would like to get off the election committee and get onto the executive committee because I want the extra vote because I want this restaurant built because I need that for the animal welfare. So I'd like to move myself. But I can't do that because that would require two moves. One, to move me off, and then two, to move Jen into the election committee because somebody always has to be on the election committee. Since that would require two moves and I have to do the minimum moves possible, I can't get off of the committee. So what I gotta do instead is I have to move either Jam or Jen off of the Union Committee or the Transport Committee, I have to move them around. I think, um, I don't want to give Jen the benefit, so I'm going to move Jam off the Union Committee. Let's see. And I will have him move on to the Treasury Committee. Okay, so there we go. He's on the Treasury Committee now. Okay, and, um, and you see, he's not in the A spot because he's starting over fresh. But Jen and I, we only have one more turn in our given committees. Okay, so now we go back to council. The council meeting starts again. And once again, uh, what that means is we get to draw more cards. And uh, let's see. So now the dummy player draws two but only keeps one randomly. He'll keep that one randomly. I get to draw two and keep one. Let's see what I got. Parks and Rec, oh, how nice. A park, a playground, and two playgrounds. Here's a park, oh, I'd like to get that built. So this might be kind of nice. If I think I could get the park built this turn. Alternatively, activate a commercial zone. The thing is, I cannot activate zones until I've gotten out of the center, so I won't be able to do this right away. Uh, let's see, parks, parks and playgrounds. No playground has come up. Um, but the park is out. But I want to get the restaurant built. So I think I'll drop that one and I'll go for commercial infrastructure. Jen, she gets two as well and she keeps one. We have a hand size of seven, by the way. Residential, activate a residential zone or build a restaurant. She sees a restaurant's out. Guess what? She's going to go for that as well. And unbeknownst to us, both of us want the same thing. Jen wants to build a restaurant and I want to build it so I can later on sell it. So we don't know this, but as it turns out, um, the finance and commerce chairman is convincing her to do something and that will help me with my eco organization activist. Okay, so Jen's kept hers and nobody got the extra vote and so now we start proposing again on the buildings and you know chances are this restaurant's going to get built because both Jen and I want it built. We just don't know we both want it. But anyway, 40 minutes! Oh my gosh, I did not expect that to go so long. Sorry, everybody. But anyway, hopefully you understand the basics. Now, what you haven't seen is really the second half of the game. Once we fill up the town center, all these additional buildings come into the game, and we can start filling up the outer zones. But the outer zones, to activate them, we have to, um, we have to activate them, which means we need to have power. So we need to start worrying about getting a power plant because we need excess power. Right now, the city only has enough power to, to um, keep these sections of the city running. To run these outer sections, we need a power plant. No power plant has come up yet. That'll be something we're pursuing. We're, I mean, so a bunch more stuff is going to happen in the extended. So if you'd like, you can hit the button right now to watch that and or the other button for final thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.